This is the Georgia Farm Monitor. Since 1966, your source for state and national agribusiness news and features for farmers and consumers about Georgia's number one industry, agriculture. The Georgia Farm Monitor is produced by the state's largest general farm organization, the Georgia Farm Bureau. Now, here are your hosts, Ray D'Alessio and Kenny Bergamy. Alrighty, thank you so much, Mr. Announcer, and thank you for tuning into the Farm Monitor, your weekly source for everything related to Georgia agriculture. I'm Ray D'Alessio. And I'm Kenny Bergamy. As we've been doing for 51 years, we have a great show for you today. Now, coming up, see how this 13-year-old Newton County 4-H'er and future engineer is using a 3D printing technology to benefit children in need of prosthetic hands. Also on the program, a Georgia icon, the peanut farmer mural in Cockwood, Georgia. We'll hear from the artist behind the mural on what it took to make this creation come to life. Plus, find out what makes this Georgia digital imaging service different from the rest and the valuable service they provide to farmers throughout the state. These stories and so much more starting right now on the Georgia Farm Monitor. Well, as you know, Georgia grows a wide variety of commodities that can be used to create countless food products, but creating those products takes a lot of time, knowledge, and the right equipment. Today, we travel to the UGA Griffin campus and visit a new state-of-the-art center that's expected to help grow the food industry right here in Georgia. My name is Kirk Keeley. I'm the director of the Food Product Innovation and Commercialization Center at, here at UGA Griffin on the Griffin campus. What we do here is help food entrepreneurs and food companies bring their products to market. We can input our help and expertise anywhere along that journey from early concept development all the way to finished product testing. This building is very unique. We have three large pilot plants that have environmental controlled chambers for anything from hot, dry, cold, wet, and anywhere in between, depending on what the food or beverage product needs. We also have three client suites, so we can have, on a great day, three different clients doing development of their products here within FoodPick. It's really important for food entrepreneurs who are trying to get beyond their kitchen. They now can come here and they can use the equipment that we have. They've got our facility and our technical expertise. We can help them with guidance on what they need to do to make their product safe and stable. We can also help if they're not quite sure if it tastes right. We can give them some advice and help them get their product to market. We see an opportunity here with this facility to have workshops, conduct workshops to help entrepreneurs fine tune their ideas. We could have things like an introduction to beverage technology. Beverage development and beverage innovation is huge and it's one area that we haven't had that facility before. We've invested in some equipment here that allows us to do very special processing of beverages, making them safe and stable using high temperatures and short times to preserve flavor but also give us that safety of the beverage that we need. This is a canner and it's used to can different ingredients or different foods. It would be used, because it rotates, you can add salt from above and as the potato chips tumble, you can salt potato chips. It's also used to sugarcoat candies like an M&M. You're adding sugar from above and you're making that sugar shell around the chocolate piece. And that is the first step in making an M&M. You follow that with color, you follow that with a a fine polish and then you have an M&M &M before you have the M printed on it. When I think about Georgia, it's a little bit like an artist who has a palette full of colors. Georgia has a palette full of raw materials. Think pecans, peanuts, peaches, blueberries, Vidalia onions. They're all here for a food scientist to take these raw materials, these colors, and combine them to make a masterpiece of a new food product or beverage. That's what I'm excited about. Well, plenty of boots and cowboy hats roaming around Atlanta as the big city got a little taste of the country during this year's Youth Equine Day at the Capitol. It's an event that both showcases the industry and recognizes all the good work being done throughout the state. David Jones has the story. When you think of Georgia agriculture, these are usually the images that come to mind. However, the equine industry also plays a vital role as it contributes more than $2 billion to the state's economy each and every year. Uh, research has shown that, that equine is, is a, a, a very large economic engine here in our state uh, with our 
arena at, uh, at the National Fairgrounds there in Perry where they are, are, are building more arenas and those kinds of things. Uh, they stay full the, the, in Conyers, Georgia. They, there's constantly horse shows going on in the state of some kind. And what better way to bring awareness to the industry than recognizing some of the best youth riders in the country in front of state legislators for all their hard work during the year. I go out and practice probably every day and go and run my horses. It takes a lot of work to do what I do and what anybody does for any kind of sport. It takes about that much work and a little bit more. I think it teaches you to really trust what you're doing with your horse and trust that you're doing the right thing. And it also gains a lot of responsibility for you. The top award of the afternoon, the Golden Saddle Award, went to the Iron Horse Therapeutic Center, who uses horses to both heal and teach life lessons. We have a lot of special needs riders, children and adults, and then military veterans and, and families. And being able to witness the change that a therapeutic riding program has on these riders and their families and whoever they come in contact with, it's incredible. It's, it's an honor and I'm so grateful to be able to do what we do. It's incredible. What you get back is a thousand times more than you give. It doesn't matter. The horses couldn't care less what, what your challenge is. They couldn't care less what you look like, what you talk like, walk like, sound like. None of it matters. They offer an unconditional relationship that a lot of these riders will not find anywhere else other than their immediate families. Having these kids honored for all their hard work and dedication is not only a thrill for them today, but will also serve them well into the future. Uh, it's incredible for these kids. A lot of these kids, it's, it's their acknowledgement for what they do in their sport and their passion and their hard work. So it, it's pretty awesome for them to go to the Capitol and get their picture taken with the governor and, and be a part of that. It's huge. While it's a unique experience for all the champion riders who participated in the event, it's also beneficial for the state senators and representatives as it allows them to make an impression on the future generation face to face. So it's a twofold thing. Our legislators get to get to see uh, what what some of the people, some of their constituents within their, their district are doing in the area of equine and, and our and their constituents can see what they do here at the Capitol. Reporting from Atlanta, I'm Damon Jones for the Georgia Farm Monitor. Damon, thank you so much. Now when we come back, the Monitor goes one-on-one -on -one with a man behind the famous peanut farmer mural in Colquitt, Georgia. Artist Charlie Johnston on the preparation and inspiration for his incredible masterpiece. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Willie Sizemore. I'm serving as the state FFA president. Uh, I'm from Lee County. I was born and raised here in Lee County and that's where I found my passion for FFA and agriculture education. I think um, my passion to serve is what really got me interested in the FFA. I, I was at my first state convention and Ben Bennett, um, a former state officer, was speaking on stage and I just saw, um, you know, me through him. I could see that I wanted to be involved in agriculture and wanted to be involved in the FFA through those state officers. And if I could give that feeling to an FFA member in, in the crowd that was at the state convention that I will serve at in a few months, that would just be an honor to give that back to, from someone who gave it to me. I've been able to experience many different things through the FFA and, and I think that's what makes our organization so amazing. There's a place for everybody within the FFA. It doesn't matter if you're an urban member from Fulton County or if you're a rural member from uh, Ware County. Anybody can be involved in this great organization. You know, for my situation, my dad was a lawyer and my mom manages real estate, so there was no agriculture in my family tree. So I found agriculture through um, agriculture education in the FFA. Anybody can do this. If your school has a um, ag ed program and has an FFA chapter, you can find a connection to agriculture and find a way to connect this to yourself. One thing that the FFA focuses on is leadership. And leadership can be used in any aspect of life, not just agriculture um, and not just any career, but in, in many aspects of life. Colquitt, Georgia, population just over 1,900. Yet it's famous for being home to the country's largest mural. Yeah, Kenny, at just over 27,000 square feet, the peanut farmer is the masterpiece of Canadian artist Charlie Johnston. After months of searching and with the help of modern technology, the monitor caught up with Johnston at an art show in Canada. Here now, in his own words, Charlie Johnston 
on what it took to make this incredible creation come to life. At the very beginning, it speaks to it speaks to the function of the of the structure itself. It's an operating peanut silo. So, uh, so right away, it speaks directly to what that building's the reason for that building's existence, and it also it speaks to the you know the community itself. And um, I mean, there was always going to be a farming theme for the mural, so uh, it just seemed to be the most natural. And I wanted to get that. I really wanted you to be taken away by the, the I, I believe in the beauty of the grand gesture, it, it, especially when it comes to monumental works and public art. I love the I love the grand gesture. So in this case, I wanted you to feel as the viewer, I wanted you to feel like you were like an ant looking up. And the grand gesture was the, the hands of the farmer swooping down and pulling up his plants to examine his crop. So you could really got a really uh, intimate, intimate look at the at the that uh, the experience it's to the date it's still the it's still the uh, the largest piece of work I've ever done one of the most uh, uh, intense experiences uh, it's right up there it's right up there is it may very well be number one I washed the silos had me cleaned in like nearly a hundred years or 80 years or whatever it was so I cleaned the silos, I cleaned all the mold off of them. And in fact, I was getting lots of offers for work to go all around the district and clean other people's silos. <laughs> Could have been my new career. So cleaning the silos and priming this patching, patching the old silos, which by the way, were handmade. Um, so uh, 80 feet in the air, you see, you see somebody's handprint in the cement where they were doing some patching when it was made. So all that work, and it was a lot of work, that took me a month alone just to wash, patch, and prime the structure. And then uh, um, what I had done was I had built a, a small model of the silos because it's it's really like it's a sculpture as well as a painting, really, because it's a, it's those four, four cylinders, it's a round, it's an interesting shape. So I painted the design on a little model that I made of the building to really understand how my idea was gonna fit in the structure and then I translated everything I did on the little model I basically did amped up on the building itself and then when I got into the detailing of it um, then it's a whole new ball game I really had to really look get right inside a peanut plant I went out on I went out in the fields and I I literally pulled up peanut pl peanut plants myself to get a sense of the experience and and I had peanut plants on my boom truck bucket that I was using as references. I, I was basically doing peanut portraits. I had a whole collection of peanuts that I used as ref references for the for the actual peanuts in the silo. And there was a lot of that kind of stuff going on in the translation of the idea to the mural. There's always there's always a, a piece of me in Colquitt because of the mural. There's always there's always gonna be a piece of me in, in Colquitt. And there's always and right now there's a there's a piece of Colquitt in Canada. <laughs> this is one of. If you look, if you look at the mural, you'll see this uh, this exact configuration of peanuts somewhere in the mural. It's just a little study I did on. Uh, it's actually on wood. As amazing as the Cockwood mural is, equally incredible is the story of Newton County 4-H'er C.J. Harris. At an age when most of his peers are wrapped up in video games or glued to their phones, the 13-year-old aspiring engineer is creating prosthetic hands in hopes of helping children who are in need of upper limb assistance. Georgia Tech is kind of like my dream college, so I used to, well I still do a little bit, research a lot of like videos and stuff about it, and they had one video about their makerspace, so I was watching it and they talked a lot about this technology called 3D printing three years back, 
and they didn't show the 3D printer, but they showed many models that it can make, and I was just like, wow, I really want this in my life, so I asked my parents, and they got one for me a few months later. I intended to make like a bunch of action figures and toys with it. I was not intending to make prosthetic hands at all, but um, I really wanted to help my community since I want to be a mechanical engineer. When he was about three, we noticed that he was very mechanically inclined and he was always tinkering and taking things apart, wanted to see how it worked. And uh, we, I, we looked at each other and we were like, yep, another one. However, we had no idea that this would evolve into what it is today. So as his homeschool mom, his edu home educator, it's, I just try to keep up with him. <laughs> I mean, really, I, I made it my mission to create an environment, an uh, educational environment, where he can be himself, as well as my daughter. And they can learn um, in a way that it's, it's tailored to them. My 4-H agency really gave me like a platform for me to expand on my project and they, I just been able to like teach classes to my peers and stuff like that about the prosthetic hand, teach them like about designing so they can make attachments to make the hands work better and stuff like that. And then I've been doing speeches at forage competitions about my prosthetic hand. So like, that's really what they do for me. And then they're always helping me. Like they help me do my pancake breakfast with help me, that helped me raise funds to get like all the elastic string and screws and stuff. And that was cool. They have been amazing. They're like, whatever you need, you know, we'll back you. And a lot of these grants and things like that, like the one he got for Disney, you have to be going, you have to go through an uh, organization. And 4-H has been that organization for us. So they've taught my kids how to hone in on their public speaking skills, how to be leaders um, in their community, and how to take their interest and turn it into something tangible and functional. So they've been like an extension of our homeschool. The hand works through like the tension strings with the elastic string. So when you like pull the fingers down, they'll come back up. And it, once, once you have like a nub on your hand, it fits in here just like that. So when you move your wrist muscle, it will bend like that. A lot of people, including me, take like our hands and our body parts and things that we do every day for granted. And I know some kids in this world don't have don't have the skills that I could don't have are not able to do things that I could do. And a way that I can make stuff for them so they can do those things is just. Really, that's what drives me forward, knowing that I could give a child a hand and they could, you know, use it for physical things. Safe to say that young man has a very bright future ahead of him. Up next, the story of the season pilot and the important service he's providing to farmers. Stay tuned. I'm Zippy Duval, and I'm a third generation dairy farmer that's now a beef farmer. Come on, man. I'm sitting here on my grandfather's old barn that he built in 1939, and I grew up here. I grew up here and thought I'd be a lawyer at one time, and uh, but I would always wear the road out from college getting back here to be with the cows because that's where I was most comfortable and enjoyed doing it. Come on, baby. Coming back home to the farm and being able to spend time with these beautiful creatures it is a sense of grounding yourself, and it's a sense of accomplishment. Come on, ain't nobody gonna hurt you. I'm very passionate about what I do. You got a good mama. I'm passionate about agriculture and farmers and their families and their communities. Come on. We carry on. this tremendous burden on our shoulders. I'll give y'all some. We're the ones that are out there making sure that food and fiber and clothing is produced in a healthy way and, and there's enough of it for everybody to go around. Yeah, my dad got me involved in Farm Bureau by encouraging me to get outside my fence rows and get involved in policy making. Well, it's important because uh, agriculture is uh, one of the main drivers outside of our urban areas. A lot of the issues we face are very difficult. We're very concerned where agriculture is right now. But the biggest thing is that they're overregulated. So we're sitting here on about 650, 700 acres of land. 
I think about all the things that we do as farmers to take care of this land and the animals, and, and it kind of motivates me to get back out and tell the story. No time in history have we ever needed a united voice in agriculture. <laughs> We're looking for opportunities in the landscape to take our organization and tell the farmer's story to make a difference in that policy that's going to shape his life back on the farm. And that's what our job is. Our mission is to be their voice. In the absence of having Farm Bureau, there would be no voice. Finally today, as we all know, farmers depend on accurate and timely data to ensure crops grow to their full potential. In Tiff County, one former military intelligence officer is using techniques and strategies that are used on the battlefields to help farmers fight diseases and pests on their fields. The Monitor's Mark Wildman has the report. In Tifton, Herb Merriman may look like just another pilot doing a pre-flight inspection on his airplane. But he is gearing up to fly over fields and take important imagery to help farmers manage their crops. He and his business partner, Scott Tennant, who is located in Colquitt, operate a franchise for Air Scout called Air Scout Southeast. And the company uses some of the same strategies that are used in the military to help farmers become more efficient and profitable. Timeliness is the key. When there's insect problems, disease problems, irrigation issues. Um, we're concerned about the plant health. Getting that information in a timely manner and acting on it is, is critical for the, uh, for the outcome for the, uh, for the grower. Air Scout planes are outfitted with cameras mounted in the luggage compartment and connected to mobile devices in the plane. Pilots take off, fly over the fields, and can give farmers and crop consultants up-to-date images in less than 24 hours. Uh, just like in the military, it's, as soon as you can identify something and either take action, uh, the sooner you can, you can move on to the next, to the next uh, problem area or, or set of priorities that you have to work on. Uh, one thing that the, uh, the Air Scout is, it's not a, a replacement for the Scout, it's used to help the scout to be more efficient in his, in his or her job. Aerial photos are nothing new to agriculture, but Herb feels Air Scout brings much more to farming than what a satellite image can offer. And Air Scout is the only company providing this type of service in the southeast. The, the customer receives three images. He receives a, uh, a digital image, and he receives a, a thermal image. And the thermal image helps to find any type of insect pressure or disease. Uh, the third image is a AirScout proprietary software uh, called Advanced Digital Vegetation Index. ADVI will help you to uh, see any nitrogen deficiencies that, that may be occurring in your field and also has capability to um, see things in bare soil. After a lengthy career as a military airborne intelligence officer, Merriman finds great satisfaction in being able to help farmers feed the nation. Uh, we image uh, produce, all types of produce, uh, specialty crops, uh, pecans, and also your, your standard row crops as well. Along with photographs, Air Scout offers an app, and they also offer an unmanned aircraft so farmers can pinpoint issues in their fields. And with this, you can check, make sure the field is lined up properly, which processors usually do a great job of, of aligning it. So now you have your, now you have your, your iPad, you're at the field, and now it shows your position. If you were standing here, it would show a blue GPS icon. And now you can walk to the exact, exact place in the field to ground truth any uh, abnormalities you see on the uh, on the thermal. You can contact Air Scout at airscout.se.us at gmail.com. Another way technology is helping farmers. Reporting from Tift County, I'm Mark Wildman for the Georgia Farm Monitor. Mark, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we are out of time. But as always, we'll see you at the same time, same channel next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great week.